coming up on tonight's UAP new show. FAA investigations of UAP. Disclosure party at Senator Schumer's office in New York City. Historical European Parliament meeting on UAP. Eric Burleson spills the tea in an Ask a Poll Discord chat. And a new alien-themed Netflix and chill opportunity. Hey there, beautiful souls. It's your girl, Allie, and we're back at it again for another episode of UAP Society's weekly UAP and UFO new show. We've combed through this past week's most exciting, intriguing, and informative happenings, and I'm stoked to get started. So without further ado, Justin, say hey. Greetings, cosmic enthusiasts. It's Justin, and welcome to the UAP Society's UAP UFO News Show. Your ticket to an interstellar adventure like no other. Whether you are a believer or a skeptic, get ready for a cosmic roller coaster ride through the latest updates from the far reaches of the galaxy. You're in for a treat <laughs> as we bring you the latest and greatest UAP and UFO news. So find your seats, strap in, and get ready to go on a galactic, galactic ride, ride with, with us. us. Please consider subscribing if you like this content, and while you're at it, drop us a like. We would greatly appreciate it. Yep. FAA investigations of UAP. This week on News Nation, Wisconsin Congressman Glenn Grothman appeared talking about a bipartisan bill that he is co-sponsoring, which would mandate FAA investigations of UAP and ensure that people can make those reports without fear of scrutiny. Let's check that out now. You may remember this object and mysterious ring that appeared over the skies of Oklahoma earlier this month, and it is far from the only unidentified object caught on camera. In 2019, this image captured of a triangular-shaped UFO in California, the Navy listing this object as unknown. Then in October of 2018, the so-called jellyfish UFO tracked near a U.S. base in Iraq, prompting national security concerns. In 2015, this craft was seen by USS Theodore Roosevelt, another UFO caught on camera by the military. And USS Nimitz tracking this Tic Tac UFO in 2004 from a Navy fighter jet before it reappeared 60 miles away on radar. Radar. Back in 2006, 12 United Airlines staff, including pilots, saw a UFO over O'Hare International Airport in Chicago. Now, the FAA denied, ref or rather refused to look into it, calling it a weather phenomenon. And now, under a new law, airline pilots will now have a new way of reporting strange, unidentifiable objects in the sky. The new bipartisan bill requires the FAA to investigate any UFO sightings. I spoke with Wisconsin Congressman Glenn Grothman about why this new UFO transparency bill is so important. Well, in the past, people could never be sure if there'd be revenge taken at them, if they'd be quite frankly referred to as crazy for imagining something like this. So now we're seeing not only pilots, but air maintenance people, flight attendants, anybody else, air traffic controllers can report these phenomena without having people, without worrying that revenge is going to be taken on them. And quite frankly, it was a problem in the past because some people just didn't believe in them thought that it might show that you have a mental problem. But you look at what you have there up on the screen. Is it important that the Department of Defense look into this and see exactly if there's any possible explanation for what's going on here? Yeah, and, and you, you're talking about potential retaliation. Did you hear any specific stories or testimony from people who say- No, but they... we, we certainly heard that people are afraid of speaking out. We heard that from the pilots who, who saw things both over the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. If a commercial airline pilot sees something they can't explain, under this bill, they can report it to the FAA, and then what happens from there? Well, they have to investigate it, see if they can find an explanation. It's important to be done on a timely basis, which I think, quite frankly, sometimes in the past was not done. Or, even worse, uh, air personnel were even afraid to report it in the first place, or fear the people would say, oh, yeah, there's Joe, you know, who, who knows what he's imagining. How does one ensure that the FAA's investigation will be rigorous, that it won't simply be written off as a weather phenomenon like in the past? Well, first of all, we have the Inspector General, which overlooks all government agencies. They'll be looking into this. And I think the public sentiment after we held these hearings is such that it's something Congress is going to, or at least the head of the committee that I'm on, is going to look into every couple of years. Can I ask, what do you think these objects are? Human-made, something more? Do you have any opinion? Well, it could be anything, right? Uh, obviously, it's nothing that we're being told about. Was it something our Department of Defense or the military of other countries have developed? Who knows? We are going to have some more private briefings on this topic. And we'll see if we can learn a little bit more at that time. I know you heard testimony from several officials in that July hearing on UFOs. What did people describe? What was the reaction? Well, it was, uh, the public clearly feels we're not being told enough. I mean, I hold a hearing every couple of weeks, 
There are several hearings every day in Congress. And I'll tell you, I can't think of a hearing that I have chaired, a subcommittee hearing, that has received so much interest. As I go around my district again and again, I hear more questions from people and people coming up to me with their own tales <laughs> of hearing of UFOs or unidentified phenomena. I know many people were disappointed by the version of the UFO records bill that was signed and released. Do you think that your bill will help in terms of transparency? Oh, I think so, because I think we're going to hear from more of these instances in the first place. And the more instances that are made public, the more instances the FAA is able to look at, the more we're going to learn. Representative Glenn uh, Grothman, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Glad to be on the show. All right. So cheers for reducing the stigma and for standardizing UAP data collection. I love how he's talking about opening it up to like all airplane people, like not just pilots, but flight attendants, the people on the ground, you know, like everybody. Anybody that's got eyes can report. I like that. Yeah, you know, this uh, would definitely go towards reducing the stigma. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need. You know, yeah. we need pilots to feel comfortable reporting uh, when they see something anomalous, mm -hmm. you know, uh, without fear of being labeled, um, you know, crazy or uh, as having some kind of mental yeah. instability, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, I support this bill. You know, it, I think it would be definitely a good thing if it passes and, um, you know, uh, we're able to get more reports because how are we even able to go and carry out investigations if we don't even know, you know, where there was an object because nobody reported it. Exactly. Yeah. There's so many sightings that occur, but then nobody wants to put pen to paper and sign their name to it because right. they're afraid that they're either going to like lose their job. They're going to get labeled as crazy, sent to the mental hospital and sent home with some meds, or if right. they're just going to get like, you know, like ridiculed or whatever. Um, but I just like the idea of opening up the floor mm -hmm. for serious discussion, standardizing how we collect this data, have the people in place to do the investigations in a timely manner, not like 10 <laughs> years later when everything is, you yeah. know, forgotten about by now. Um, but yeah, I just really like that. I think that that's cool. And I'm here for it. Yeah, me too. All right. And while we're talking about celebrating UAP transparency, let's hop on the disclosure train <laughs> to our next story. Choo -choo. <laughs> <laughs> disclosure party at Senator Schumer's office in New York City. According to an article called UAP Advocates Rally at Senator Schumer's Office in New York as Efforts Mobilize Across 45 States from the Debrief.com, it says, Advocates for the disclosure of U.S. government records related to Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, or UAP, will attend a sidewalk rally in New York this week in support of Senator Chuck Schumer and his efforts towards greater government transparency and to urge for future congressional hearings on the matter. Citizens for Disclosure Now is a New York City-based partner of the California-based New Paradigm Institute Citizens for Disclosure, or NPI, founded by the UAP transparency activist and longtime constitutional and public interest lawyer Danny Sheehan. The inaugural rally event is to be the first in a series of similar gatherings, which has reportedly attracted more than 344 volunteers, and NPI says it is currently vetting candidates to start local and state chapters in 45 U.S. states. The objective of the event is to both engage Americans on the UAP subject, but to also foster global participation, with new paradigm volunteers currently also working to coordinate rallies in as many as 17 countries. Sheehan said he believes the DOD's control of information about UAP has worked, quote, to conceal from us the effort of its members to capture and reverse engineer the technology of an enigmatic phenomenon to ever more sophisticated secret weapons through which further to assert their full spectrum military dominance over our planet rather than provide the world with a powerful, clean source of energy, end quote. We must educate and mobilize our presently fractured public around this deeply profound issue and demand that our government become honest and transparent and therefore once more worthy of our trust, Sheehan said. To express appreciation for Senator Schumer's efforts and to demand more congressional hearings with whistleblowers, Citizens for Disclosure Now will hold its rally in front of Schumer's office in New York City on March 21st from noon to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The event will be the first that Citizens for Disclosure Now and the New Paradigm Institute have partnered on. Let's take a look at some of that footage from that event now. The extraterrestrial phenomenon is real. And that's what's so important about Schumer's leadership, is he guided through legislation that for the first time in history states categorically in law 
that non-human intelligences and non-human technologies are real. It's time for us to make this a physical thing. It's time for us to show not only the politicians that we are, that are supporting our cause, that we support them, but that also that the whistleblowers and their families have support they need to go forward and do what they're doing. And from a New York Post article called UFO Truthers Converge on Chuck Schumer's New York City office to celebrate humankind's ET moment, it reads, UFO Truthers declared humankind's ET moment as they rallied outside U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer's New York City office on Thursday to celebrate efforts to prove the phenomena aren't a hoax. Believers landed on Third Avenue outside the Democratic Senate leader's office saying they were over the moon over his efforts to push UFO disclosure legislation through Capitol Hill last year, as many attendees recounted their own stories of run-ins with the unexplained. It's an extraordinary moment. Humanity is entering its ET moment, says 74-year-old Dr. Jim Garrison, a director at the UFO advocacy group New Paradigm Institute. The extraterrestrial phenomena is real, he told the Post. That's what is so important about Schumer's leadership. Garrison and his cohorts were referring to Schumer's outspoken advocacy for 2024 National Defense Authorization Act, which sought to compel the government to reveal whatever information it has on unexplained aerial phenomena, and whether or not it has aliens locked away beneath Los Alamos or Area 51. The legislation will be discussed by historians in a thousand years because it is the first moment where the most closely guarded secret in history is beginning to see the light of day, officially, Harrison said. So it looks like they had a pretty decent turnout there. There wasn't like a whole yeah. parade's worth of people, but there was definitely a good crowd. Mm -hmm. People were holding signs. It's cool. <laughs> um, what I didn't really appreciate, though, was like that mocking kind of undertone that that New York Post article had. Um, mm -hmm. There there was like a lot of it that had like a really kind of mm -mm, kind of tone to it. And I didn't really include those parts because I didn't like that. Um, but I appreciate the fact that they covered some of the personal personal UFO encounter stories from the people that were there that did show up to the event. Like they went through like five different people's stories. Yeah. So um, if you do want to check that out, I recommend um, looking at the article in its entirety so you can appreciate what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, I, the New York post is kind of a hard one for me. Yeah, I know. Um, you, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it was hard for me to read that article to be honest, <laughs> but you know, there is little good tidbits of information in there. So, yeah, um, yeah, I was happy that they, you know, turned out to support what they believe in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's cool that we're doing things to show support for the people that are showing support for this topic. Yeah. Um, you know, Danny Sheehan has been a UAP advocate for a long time. He's obviously a lawyer, so he's got that background where he represents whistleblowers and everything. And and I also think it's really cool that this is the first time that the Citizens for Disclosure Now and the New Paradigm Institute like partnered up and did a little collab session. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always I'm always a fan of collabs. I don't know what it is about collabs, but I just really like them. <laughs> <laughs> You're always collabing. I love it. I love it. When people work together, it's a good thing, man. Uh, and while we're on Third Avenue, let's head down to the subway to catch the disclosure train to our next stop, Europe. <laughs> Historical European Parliament meeting on UAP. On March 21st, 2024, the EU had a historical meeting on UAPs where they opened the floor for UAP discussion and had a series of relevant presenters. Robert Powell tweets, European Parliament meeting on UAP. Francisco Guerrero, a European parliamentarian, held a meeting with the major European UAP organizations with attendance from several U.S. organizations. The SCU was represented in person by Lee Dines, the sole foundation by Peter Scafish, and Americans for Safe Aerospace by Ryan Graves. Also present was Beatrice Villaroel, a scientist at the Nordic Institute for Theoretical Physics. She will be presenting at the SCU conference on May 31st through June 2nd. One of the main objectives of MEP Giro is to start a debate inside the European Parliament on unidentified anomalous phenomena. The meeting made clear that all the debates surrounding UAP must be based on the scientific method. Furthermore, the meeting emphasized that the scientific method requires transparency, accountability, and data sharing to maintain credibility. This is much different from the current U.S. effort run by Arrow, where the data is not transparent 
and will not be shared. Shade. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. The Soul Foundation's Beatrice Villaroyal, one of the presenters of this event, says, Yesterday was a historical day. I'm honored to have been part of the UAP Reporting and Scientific Assessment meeting at the European Parliament in Brussels. It's time to remove that stigma that blocks science for decades. Let's take a look at a clip from the Francisco Giro Multimedia YouTube channel where he goes over the objectives and presenters in the meeting. First of all, I would like to thank everyone that is involved uh, in this exchange of views, as well as all the participants, citizens, and institutions that are seeing us online. Politically, this event has four main objectives. First, start the debate inside the European Parliament on unidentified anomalous phenomena, which is a topic that is dear to thousands of Europeans. The feedback that I've been having from several EU citizens and outside the EU borders has been overwhelming. Secondly, to decrease the decrease the stigma associated with the topic inside important sectors of our society, such as civil aviation, the military, journalism, but also politics. Third, and probably the most important, it's essential that all the debates surrounding UAPs is based in the scientific method and held in close cooperation with public institutions, the academia, civil society, and all the professionals that are willing to open and voluntarily share their experiences. Fourth, and lastly, the path of the European Union in regards of UAPs must be made with transparency, data sharing and accountability so we don't lose our credibility in a topic that is dear to many of our constituencies and citizens. Whatever the findings, we must foster this scientific approach to improve our institutions. Therefore, my work as a member of the European Parliament focus on the creation of an EU harmonized system of monitoring, gathering and analysis of data on UAPs. The EU, institutionally composed of 27 member states, does not have such system and thus thousands of citizens and experienced professionals don't know or feel safe to report events they can't explain. We must improve our scientific methodology and connect the EU institutions to the public and academia, and academia in a transparent and credible way. After these political considerations, let me present the panel and share some technical information. First, we'll have Mr. Ander Jol from UAP Quality Netherlands with a presentation about the topic of UAPs. After, we'll pass to Mr. Eduardo Russo from the UAP Czech and EuroInfoNet, who will guide us on the UAP's history in the European Union. Thirdly, we'll listen to Mrs. Beatriz Villajuel from the Nordic Institute of Theoretical Physics of Stockholm University and member of the Sol Foundation to present us her vision on the scientific approach we should have on analyzing UAPs. After, we'll connect online to the US with a former Navy pilot and executive director of Americans for Safe Aerospace, Ryan Graves. He will enlighten us about the recent developments in USA on the topic. Finally, but not least, we'll hear an important share and testimony of a civil aviator pilot, Christian Van Eist. So I definitely feel like that's a positive step in, in the right direction. For know? sure. Um, we definitely need other countries to start looking at this issue. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is just a, you know, United States, you know, or American problem, so to speak. You know, I mean, definitely, this is worldwide. Definitely not. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's awesome that they're coming at it from a scientific approach, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and again, they're collabing. They're collabing because it's the EU working with us. You got people from the Soul Foundation mm -hmm. there. You got Ryan Graves that was there. Um, and yep. they're all about transparency data collection using the scientific method, mm -hmm. connecting the government reporting agencies with the public who may be encountering and seeing these things. And it's just like the other story that we just covered where it's like opening the space for more people to come forward with what they experience right, right. because to it's not just signal. military professionals mm -hmm. that are experiencing this. Although that is a wide category of people that do experience the phenomenon, you got everyday folks that are also experiencing it too. Right. Yeah, it's, it's super critical that we reduce the stigma uh -huh. so that we get more people reporting what they see exactly. if they see something yep and since we're mentioning worldwide ufos let me just toss in this tweet from ross colthart <laughs> that says for those who assert that these pesky uaps only ever hover <laughs> over usa nuclear installations and why don't we see them worldwide here's a new report from india uaps seen over key indian nuclear sites this is an international issue mm -hmm. That tweet features an article talking about India's experience with witnessing UFOs over their nuclear facilities and their seacoasts. So there we go. Just another point proven that it's 
it's worldwide, guys. It's worldwide. Right. right. You know, and it's it's not just our uh my okay. It's not just the United States' um nuclear um power plants or nuclear weapons that they are in, interested in, you know. They are interested in any sort of nuclear facility, right? Mm -hmm. Around the whole world. You right. know, I mean, it, that I includes Russia the, and China. Yeah, I think from from the NHI's perspectives, mm -hmm. they're looking at us like a bunch of kids that is playing with matches near like a dry forest. They're like, oh, oh yeah. crap, what are these kids <laughs> about to blow up? You know, right. like, oh, my God. So right. I don't think I don't that know. they're I don't think that they look at it from like racial eyes like us humans tend to do. We're always like, oh, it's it's USA mm -hmm. sites or India sites or China's or Russia. They don't give a shit about that. All they know is that the kids are playing with matches and take the <laughs> matches away from the kids before they harm somebody, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I really hope that's what it is. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, <clears throat> you know, we don't know what it is at the end of the day. So I feel like we definitely need more data. Mm -hmm. We need more data in the form of pilots reporting what they see. We need more data yeah. in the form of electro-optical you know, data. We need more radar data, you know, or well, we need radar data that's not classified, you know, that mm -hmm. the general population can have access to. Very true. You know, yep. um, so I'm happy that all these other countries are starting to talk about this topic. I mean, we've you covered know. the European Union. We've covered, obviously, America. We've covered China. Mm -hmm. We've covered Italy. Mexico. We just covered uh, India. We've talked about Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, yeah. Worldwide, guys, worldwide. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like to check out that tweet or that article in more detail, make sure to check out the video description box below where you can find links to that and all other sources that are mentioned in the show. And it even shows up in the order that we talk about it in. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> right. And up next, Eric Burleson spills the tea in Ask a Poll's Discord chat. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that's about. <laughs> uh, this week, UAP caucus member Representative Eric Burleson opened up about his UAP skepticism during an hour and 47 minute long call on the Ask a Poll Discord server. <laughs> mm -hmm. Coleman Jones tells us in a live Discord Ask a Poll UAP's chat with Matt Laszlo, Representative Eric Burleson says the UAP caucus has given two locations housing alleged non human technology mm. that he can't speak about, but worries about such tech being moved before a congressional delegation can go inspect them. And ironically, that's exactly what Ross Colhart was talking about. Uh, what, like two or three months ago? Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Talking about that, like, if you give them enough of a heads up, that by the time you knock on the door, there's nothing behind it anymore. Right, but right. anyways, go ahead, keep going. And then, <laughs> uh, and the UFO Joe quotes Burleson as saying, uh, David Grush and others within the UAP community said that they are not traveling here. They're phasing into our existence. I wouldn't be shocked if Representative Mike Turner doesn't try to stop the speaker from helping us get a UAP subcommittee. Uh, let's take a listen to some of that conversation for ourselves. Do you feel like some people in your party or in your chamber have the answers and know them? Or that they're just not curious? Because when I talked to Jim Himes uh, from, you know, the top Democrat on uh, House Intel, he's not curious at all. He's like, no, people in the government told me the ET issue is totally settled and he just believes it. Um, yeah, do you feel like anyone in your chamber, besides the folks in the UAP caucus, with the seniority, are in the know, or are they just ostriches? I don't think that I don't think that they are. Yeah. In the know, and I think that they don't have a desire to actually ask them for a question. They're not. They're not. Um, you know, look. There's two types of people within politics. There are people that consider their job as a watchdog. And someone that, you know, whatever the agency is that you're overseeing, you feel that it's your responsibility to be there on behalf of the taxpayers and provide oversight and, and be skeptical of the agency that you are, you have the purview with over. And then there's people that become cheerleaders of that agency and, and they become captive for by the agencies that, they, that they're um, assigned to. And they, because they, their goal is to please people within the bureaucracy and, and then create a path for becoming a lobbyist in the private sector after, afterwards. Mm. So if they're not at all interested in, in, in being difficult or being a thorn um, or, you know, spur in the saddle of anybody. Um, and so they, they're never going to question uh, what's being told to them. What naturally happens is that, unfortunately, there's a culture within, I believe there's a culture within the intel community 
um, but the, the only people that get on the committee and continue to rise to the ranks are people that are of the latter uh, personality type, people that are cheerleaders of the bureaucracy, people that, that are cheerleaders of the uh, private sector agencies that are involved. So they're basically, I, I hate to use be so crass, but in, in essence, yes. Okay, so just for a side note, throwing that out there, I know that the audio on that was really difficult to hear. Um, that's why I threw up the little subtitle box at that certain part where I had the quote for it from. And then I also threw like a dialogue processor on an editing. This is probably TMI, but I tried to help the audio out and that was the best I could get it. So I hope that you guys appreciated it. Um, but anyway, so that was like an hour and 47 minute long chat that they had on the Ask a Poll server. And um, they also talked about a lot of the, they talked a lot about the recently requested UAP subcommittee and whether or not that would be granted or if it was going to get blocked and if it was going to get blocked by whom and if it was going to get blocked by that person why so if you want to know more um i definitely suggest checking out like the full length version of that chat and of course as always links can be found in the description box below yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i mean last week we talked about that subcommittee getting requested and you know we've yet to hear any results of it because it's still too soon um but i'm always trying to stay optimistic glass ha glass half full type of person mm -hmm. so hopefully we will get some results from that request um however he seems to think that there may be some roadblocks ahead of him in order for that to happen um depending on who comes back from where and what they say when they get back and you just got to really listen to the whole thing yourself to understand what i'm really talking yeah. about but um either way it's cool that matt laszlo got yeah. rep eric burleson on his discord server to talk to people right. for that long and i always like when congressmen just happen to like donate their time to people and just have casual conversations outside of being in front of like a news right. camera you know what i mean yeah exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Discord, you know, if uh, you guys are unaware, we have our own Discord, the UAP Society. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be awesome if you would join. Yep. <laughs> of course, the invitation is where? In the description box the below. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the last story of the evening is a good old alien themed Netflix and chill opportunity. <laughs> On April 3rd, 2024, Netflix will release a UAP related documentary called Files of the Unexplained, whose description says eerie encounters, bizarre disappearances, haunting events, and more perplexing phenomena are explored in this chilling investigative docuseries. Mm. If you're curious like me and want to see the trailer, let's look at it together now. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Pretty that cool. That looks super interesting. Yeah. I can't wait for that. To I know. Out. Shout out to Christopher Mellon who showed up in that little trailer. I thought that was pretty cool to see yeah, his face in there. Right. <laughs> Netflix is coming through lately. Have you guys noticed how many documentaries they've been putting through with like a UFO theme? First, they did the four part series of the Steven Spielberg. What was that called? I forgot already. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to go back a couple of new shows to remember. Sorry, I don't remember. Johnny on the spot, forgetful brain sometimes. Yeah. But anyways, um, it was that was a good series, and now mm -hmm. they're coming out with this one. Um, that whole 21 feet thing showing up in a lake, that's super creep. I don't know yeah. what is the deal oh, with that. Right. I was like, what are you talking about? Either. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, um, I'm always down for a good couch cuddle sesh with right. some kind of alien-themed <laughs> show or movie or documentary or something. Uh -huh. So I'm definitely here for it. Yeah, um, that's coming out, like, you know, right around the corner it'll be here soon yeah you know i think i think this documentary reiterates the <clears throat> the fact that the phenomena is not just related to things people see in the sky right right you know the phenomena is also you know has paranormal aspects associated with it right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's you reminding know? me it's like giving me chris bledsoe vibes you know like i'm wondering if he's in that documentary too if he's not that was like a missed opportunity in my opinion mm -hmm. but yeah i don't know anyway it looks interesting i can't wait to watch it same same <laughs> also while we're talking about this kind of stuff um just a recommendation we recently binged uh, a tv show called resident alien oh and if you have not <laughs> seen resident alien highly recommend yeah highly recommend yeah it's funny it's totally alien related it's uh -huh. got like slapstick like <laughs> douche douche kind of humor and it's got a lot of ufo lore in it, it. it's douche, douche, douche. Douche. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot of ufo lore in it it like features like the whitley streber communion book it's got like the ufo fest that happens yeah, as a, well there's like a lot of a good really, story behind it too yeah it's yeah a good it's a good, it's a good story show. and there's Definitely like a, a lot show. of real right. facts from the ufology world that are embedded into it on right. top of humor on top of the other content in the show so i that's another good recommendation Right. Just had to throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, we digress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at digressing sometimes. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> and that concludes this week's UAP Society's weekly UAP and UFO new show. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And while you're here, do us a favor, smash that like button, click subscribe, ring our little notification bell, drop a lovely comment down below and share this video with your family and friends to help us spread the good word. Let's, Let's raise, raise the, the collective, collective consciousness, consciousness together, together in, in unity. unity. Good job. All right. Much love, <laughs> peace, peace and, and namaste. namaste.